Hey everybody, welcome back to Shock and Shock. I'm your host, Trisha Gillis, and today is day 14 of my 31 Days of Horror Reviews. And today, taking a look at an oft-maligned, uh, often-criticized horror sequel. Oh boy. 1995's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, also known as The Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by Kim Ankle. Oh boy. Okay, let's get into it. Um, So, this one, much more straightforward story, or, you know, they're all pretty straightforward, but this one is a... something. Um, This one's about this group of teenagers who on prom night are uh, driving around, you know, having silly fun like the teenagers do. Kids these days, right? Uh, They crash into another car, and they try to, you know find their way through the woods, and of course get captured by uh, the family from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They didn't even say they're the Sawyers in this one, but, you know, whatever. They kind of are. Um, And, yeah. That's it. There's not a whole lot of stuff to say about this one. Let's get into it, because I got quite a bit to say. Um, First off, the two, the biggest, like, thing that I think most people know about this one is that Renee Zellweger and um, Matthew McConaughey are both the lead roles in this, with Matthew McConaughey playing Vilmer, who is one of the members of the family, and Renee Zellweger playing Jenny, who is, like, the lead teenager. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Where to begin? So, for a movie in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, this borderline has no kills in it. Uh, It has, like, two on screen, and they're both just neck-breaking. There's not a singular chainsaw kill in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4. Um, Not a single one. And... Oh boy, the writing in this one is something. Um, now, I feel like this is sounding like I hated this movie. I didn't hate it. Um, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. Um, this is certainly the most like unhinged, weird, and silly entry in the franchise. Um, Matthew McConaughey's Vilmer is like one of the most over-the-top characters in the series, and probably Matthew McConaughey's craziest role that I've seen. Um, he plays this, like, unhinged psychopath guy. I don't want to spoil the end of, like, sort of what he is, but he has this, like, mechanical robot leg that makes this atrocious grating sound whenever he walks around. Um, it is kind of funny at first until it happens for such a long time. Um, and, yeah, this... There's a lot of screaming. I watched the extended cut of this as well, and, you, and shout out to Scream Factory for cutting corners, or it, maybe they were working with the best they had, but the drop in film quality uh, between certain scenes in this one, it's like the uncut scenes added is jarring, to say the least, but anyway. Um, Matthew McConaughey's extra scenes in those, a lot of them are just his scenes that were cut, um, and he's just screaming and saying weird things, and yeah. Why would they cut those? Matthew McConaughey is the best part of this movie. I'll say that. Like, it is something watching him go. Um, say what you want about the writing. It's, it's not good. Um, he does the best with what he has. He definitely chews the scenery. Um, as I mentioned, the writing this is fucking awful. Um, the teenagers in this are all those generic caricatures and... To the point, though, that it becomes so weird that it's sort of funny. And, like, this was, this feels like it was written by, like, somebody from Twin Peaks, which is a good thing. Um, it's just, a lot of this is so bad that it's good in a way, or so weird that it's just bizarre. My cat is licking my grate. Sorry. Um. Oh, boy. Yeah, it is something, watching these characters interact with each other. Uh, Leatherface in this is somehow more smooth-brained than any of the other films. Um, he's very dopey 
and stupid and weird in this, and he's entertaining to watch. Like, there's a part where he plays Peekaboo with Renee Zellweger, pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, that's something. Um, the pacing in this pretty off. Uh, a lot of this drags, unfortunately. The weird parts are great, and the stupid parts are great, especially like the very like last fifteen minutes of this movie. Banger. If you like B horror movies and so bad they're good movies, the last fifteen minutes this is Chef's Kiss. Um, but you are just tr- like the scenes where they're trying to be serious and the writing is so bad does not serve the film. Um, yeah, just. Not great in those parts. Um, this is a very different entry in the series, to say the least, as well. It is very over the top. Um, it is sometimes even hard to tell what they're trying to, you know, do with this, if it's trying to be serious or not, because it's so silly that it's kind of hard to take it seriously. Um, but yeah. Um, oh boy. Uh, cinematography, like technical aspects are not like, fantastic, but they serve their purpose, um, I actually do really like the atmosphere in a couple scenes in this, with, like, the fog rolling in, and Matthew McConaughey's character being really weird, it adds this, like, it's like this dreamlike aspect of it, um, can definitely see why people that do enjoy this movie enjoy it, um, I enjoyed it, but it's just, you know, the dragging parts weren't my favorite, but anyway, the soundtrack, not awesome either, but it's, it's fine, it serves its purpose, um, Renee Zellweger's performance, not bad, um, she certainly did better later on, obviously, um, but Matthew McConaughey really is, like, the star of this movie, um, I believe this is one of his first roles in film anyway, um, and yeah, that was super entertaining to watch, but the thing is, if you're going into this wanting a traditional Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, or something that, you know, makes sense, or is, you know, one of the better entries in the franchise, or even something that's, like, feels like a franchise movie, this probably isn't going to be for you. This seems to be a movie that a lot of people hate, and a few people really enjoy. I'm sort of in the middle. Um, I loved some parts of this, and how fucking bizarre and weird they are, and, like, some parts were actually funny with... Well, one scene that comes to mind is Leatherface tries to, like, push this girl in a freezer, and she keeps popping up, and he's, like, getting angry that she keeps popping up. Sort of funny. Um, and I do think it's funny how they call Leatherface, like, Leatherface is two words, and that's his name. Like, Matthew McConaughey calls him Leather several times. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah. That was funny. I like a lot of this. It's just that the parts that drag really feel not great because the acting, the writing is just not there. So when it's not over the top into this kind of like stick wooden acting and that does not serve the film well at all. Um, also thought it was interesting that uh, Kim Hankel was the director of this because he was one of the co-writers of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and I don't know how he thought this would go over well, (laughs) to say the least. Um, it's gained some appreciation in recent years, and I can see why, with the weird parts, it's just not my personal favorite in the series. That would be part two. Um, so, you know, I do like the more over-the-top and goofy entries in the series. But anyway, yeah, that's it for day 14 of the 31 Days of Horror Reviews. Um, yeah, make sure to subscribe if you haven't, keep your notifications on, and as always, zero thoughts, zero editing, zero brain cells, and zero planning. Thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you tomorrow with another review. Thanks guys.